hi everyone welcome back again to another further tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be dealing with the basics of http request in flutter okay and in flutter we have the dependency for http which allows us to make uh, any external api or web server calling easy and, uh, and what we'll be dealing with this tutorial is like we'll be having this get data button what you could see here right and once the uh, get data button is being pressed it just makes a call to an external api and the api will be responding with two fields one is id and another is name okay and once the uh, call is being made and if the response is a success one i'll be just displaying one of the field which is the name alone here in the ui okay and till that or unless or until the api call is being made and if there is no value then i will be just making use of the circular progress bar and this keeps spinning uh, until the call is being made it is being fetched from the api okay and uh, let me click on this get data button and uh, you could see here uh, a success message that is the response is being is a success one and i am just displaying the response from the api one of the fields which is the name okay so this is the basics of how to make an http request and let us move on to the coding part to get to know a bit more detailed of how to implement this http request and the api calling inside your flutter app all right and the package what you need to have in your pass spec is this http package or the dependency was which you need to add all right and after adding that and before entering the coding part let us just understand the basics hierarchy of the folder structure and the uh, the things what we need to predefine before making an api call okay first we have these three folders which is model repository and screens so let's say this model i have a class called the demo model so this demo model class is nothing but the same like defining a table in your database so as said before uh, our api will be returning the id and name which is the two fields we have so and uh, this from json function is helpful to just map those json values the key to the corresponding values okay so this is the demo model class which we need to have and the next thing is inside the repository we have this constants dot file so here inside this we just need to provide your base url for your api okay and the next file is api file in this api file we have the function called fetch data this fetch data function is what is going to call make the http call to the external api okay so this api url is what we have seen before okay uh, the inside the constants class okay and the uh, this is the base url and followed by which i will be appending the endpoints okay so in our case the endpoint is the users and the base url will be gonna be same for all the https and the only thing what is going to change is the endpoint alone okay and this after making an http and the request uh, the method is get okay i'm using here and the response i will be getting inside this variable which is the response variable and the response will be containing the data as well as the response data and the status code first we need to check for the status code okay so based on the status code only we can categorize that response whether it is a success or a failure one so i'll be checking for the success condition alone in this case for the time sake so if i if the status code is 200 then the response is a success one and if it is a success one then i'll be making use of this from json so this from json is the function what we have already discussed in the demo model class okay so uh, that inside this function i'll be just uh, passing the response body uh, using the json the decode i'll be passing the response body so it will be automatically mapping that JSONs to the corresponding key values okay and if the status code is anything other than 200 then i'll be just simply throwing an error stating fail to load demo api okay so this is inside the repositories and inside the screens you can see 
have UI and widgets. Inside this widget, we have the simple basic of all widgets what we will be using in the later part. And if you go to the UI, and here is what we have the actual uh, rendering methods. Okay, so we have the simple uh, UI ready, which has this button. Okay, and the only thing left is the circular progress indicator. Okay, so uh, as said before, uh, we need to make an API call once uh, we just click on this get data button. Okay, and for that, we just need to write logic and say the on press event of that button widget. Okay, and uh, what we need to do now is we just need to call that fetch data functions what we have in say this repositories API. Okay, we just need to call this function which is fetch data whenever the button is being pressed. Okay, now, now let's call that function, and uh, you can see that the get fetch data function actually returns something see here it actually returns the demo model class which is of type future okay so we just need to get that as well for that we just need to first define that inside this class okay just need to can create a variable which is of type future and demo model and what i am going to name it as future model right and just make use of that over here so I am actually getting the response and say this future model so this future model is nothing but an instance for the demo model which is of type future okay now we have actually made a call that is the logic for the API call is done whenever the button is being pressed but we haven't addressed the scenario that uh, we need to render the circular progress indicator till the API calling is being made. For that, we just need to make use of another widget. Okay, so let me build that as well. Right, and um, for building that widget, let me create a custom function which is build future text data. And we can pass in the context so because we are making use of this current text in the later part. Copy paste it for the time shake. Okay, so on say this function, what I will be having is okay. the function will be and passing the build context as well. Okay. This function actually need to be wrapped inside the future builder widget because we are making an api call and we are unaware of the execution time and uh, the data whether it is being going to be a success or a failure one so in order to check for those conditions we just need to make use of the future builder okay and this future builder is also a demo model class all right the future builder will be taking the future parameter and in our case the future parameter is this future model only right and after that inside this builder we need to pass in the context as well as the snapshot date okay all right and we need to check for two conditions here inside this future model that is inside the future builder we just need to check for the data whether the response actually contains the data or if it does not contain the data we can return something else so that conditional logic needs to be written over here and for checking that we can make use of the snapshot and the uh, method is has data Okay, if snapshot dot has data, that is the response actually contains something, then we can return build text data, which is a custom widget which we have defined in the generals folder. Okay, and what uh, it's uh, it is actually a text widget which returns the text, and the text what I'm gonna pass is snapshot.
apps so the data dot and the name okay now if it has a data then it will be returning uh, the data that is the name or else if it is that is the snapshot is has something or some error then we just need to check for that condition as well and you can make use of this has error okay it is then just return will text widget the same we can make use of that widget function and instead of the name we can just pass in it as error okay so now we are actually checking for the two conditions whether it has an error or it has data so for the rest of the remaining cases i will be just returning the circular progress indicator okay right now we have actually completed the coding side uh, we just made a call to the external api using this fetch data function and based on that i will be just building up the widgets using the future builder okay so now actually the call is not being made so uh, this gets executed the future builder executes the circle progress indicator so you can see that the circle of progress is gone now let me click on this get data button so actually it is an error because we haven't provided the api url okay so it is actually empty so it actually uh, executes this condition has error and we are getting this error now let me just give on that uh, api url okay now i have provided the api url now let me check it again now let me click that get data button and you can see now this condition gets executed the snapshot actually has some data and i am building up the text widget which uh, renders the name alone okay so this is all about the basics of http request what you can make use of in your flutter app hope you guys enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next video bye